and welcome to this next installment of our Holiness Tabernacle Words to Live By, an opportunity for our women's department, the, the ladies in our women's department, to share a little bit um, about the Word of God um, and how it's imparted and impacted their lives um, and to share those nuggets with us. Um, my name is Missionary Danielle Powell. I'm excited to be with you. And I'm really excited because this year, our theme is my favorite Bible verse is. And so we're, we've are we been having some awesome, awesome conversations with the women of God about their favorite verse, what it means to them, how it's impacted their lives. Um, and so I'm really, really excited because we are in for a super, super treat. One of my favorites is here today with us. Um, in the person of missionary Delia Pruitt. Um, and she is, uh, she wears many, many hats. I can't go through them all, um, but uh, she is our church organist. Um, she is a prayer warrior. I was actually just speaking the other day how much I really, really enjoy hearing you pray um, because I don't know, you're, I just enjoy hearing you pray and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, and, and one of the things that I also admire, she is one of our teachers, um, in her professional life, she's a teacher, um, and, and she brings that same knowledge and enthusiasm to our young people at our church. Everyone knows Sister Doya, everyone, all the kids love Sister Doya because, um, she doesn't mind getting at their level and really engaging and interacting with them and teaching them, um, about the word of God, about life skills. Um, and she has truly been a blessing to me, to my family, to my kids, and my life. And I'm just so glad to have you with us today. Um, and so with that, uh, we're going to go right into uh, my favorite Bible verse is. And what would that be for you? For me, my favorite, I have many, but my favorite Bible verse is Matthew 28, verse 19. And it says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Um, that I mean, There's more around the scripture, but that particular one has verbs that are very, very important to me and that have, very, have been very influential in my life and my decision-making. Okay, well, let's dive right in. What does the that scripture, you talked about the verbs in there. I'm really mm -hmm. interested to hear about that. What does this passage mean to you? When I was, uh, where I was working at a, at a at a firm in D.C., trying to be an adult, trying to do a corporate desk job, answering phones, filing paperwork, and hating it. Mm -hmm. um, just grateful to have income, but just was really struggling to enjoy what I was doing. Um, and I was really searching. The year was 2017, and I was just really mm -hmm. searching. I was like, God, I just this doesn't feel like the right fit for me. I know on paper, this is what I'm supposed to be. You know, you get a college degree and then you work at a corporate job and you enjoy the benefits, but something about this was just deeply unsatisfying. And so I don't even remember how I came across this verse, but when I read it, the verbs in it, go and teach, screamed at me. It, 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 jump off the page and screamed at me. And I str I still battled with it for a few more months, but I knew I was like, Lord, I need to go and teach. That's mm -hmm. what I love to do. That's what I think I'm supposed to do. I, you know, I'm tired of fighting it. And um, August, 2017, I walked off that job um, with no prospects, nothing, no certifications, nothing. I just left the job and didn't work for a while, just holding on to that verse. And in September of 2000, um, by September, excuse me, by July of 2018, I entered my first classroom as a full-time teacher and I've been doing that ever since. So for me, um, those verbs, go, just do it, just do it and teach. That's the thing I'm supposed to do. And while I'm going and while I'm teaching, I'm, I'm you know, my, my, I'm also um, reaching the goal of, teaching people about Jesus. Yes, I teach language arts, which mm -hmm. is probably why I pay attention to verbs, but <laughs> go and teach mm -hmm. my, while I'm doing that, I have countless opportunities to teach people about, about Jesus. I love that. I don't know if I knew that story specifically as relates to that verse um, and you. And I just think as you were sharing that, I was just like, wow, it's so beautiful to see how the word of God, God used, you know, 
the word of God, it's written, you know, thousands, millennia years ago. Um, and yet the truth, it's a living document. It's a yes. living testament. And it speaks to us even today. And that verse, just as you were describing how it literally like, sit, like arrest, go mm -hmm. teach, you know, in a very real like right now, let's yes. do this. And that, I don't know, I just, I love that. I love that that testimony and that story. Um, and so I guess my next question, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, obviously in the natural, it, it, it inspired you to, to leave the corporate job and to go full-time into the teaching, into the classroom. Um, and, and I could have told you that that's, I mean, obviously that's your gifts and, and talents, but, and, you know. Uh, <laughs> it was not, you weren't the first person or the second person, but it was something that I, God had to tell me himself. Mm -hmm. My yeah. Parents had been telling me since I was a teenager, mm -hmm. like everybody around me, oh, Sister Delia, love, love the kids. But my mom was like, no, but I have to have a grown up job. So it really literally took God showing me in his word. And I wasn't searching for a scripture. I still don't even remember how I came across it. But the verbs in that scripture, what I was reading through, I just could visualize Jesus standing on a cloud as he's ascending. And they're all looking at him like, what do we do now? And he's like, go teach <laughs> and I I and I'm, and that's that's as simple as it was for me I realized mm -hmm. oh I'm standing here asking God but what do I do but what do I do I've been telling you mm -hmm. I've been showing you through your loved ones and people go and teach and it was really that literal for me no and I I love that and you're absolutely right um people can speak things into your life and and but until God really you know you hear that that voice from the Lord speaking to you that's what really kind of makes it oh okay okay this is really this is the real deal this is this is really what it is um so i guess my question to you then is how might you encourage if someone is finding themselves you know in a situation where they're unsure about a next step they don't know you know well yeah you know missionary pruitt that worked for you you know you read your bible and god spoke to you i sometimes feel like when i go and search the scriptures i'm still not understand like how do i find myself or how can someone find themselves in a place where they can say no as i'm reading god's word i know that it applies to me i know god is little me where i'm at in my house sitting on the bus on the metro, whatever, at my boring desk job that I don't enjoy, but I, I use it to pay the bills, whatever that thing might be, or this big opportunity, but I don't know if I should take it because it's kind of scary and, it, and I might have to sacrifice some things and I might have to like really trust God in a season that's a little scary. How might you encourage them through your testimony or through this verse or to, to kind of trust God and, and to seek his word concerning their life? Well, you already said a very important part of it. Um, we can't complain of God's silence if his book is closed. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I, I can't even take credit for that quote. I read it last night. I was like, ooh, I can't complain about God being silent if his book is closed. So if you are opening his book, if you are searching the scriptures, it takes patience and faith to know that God is reaching for you. God is not sitting with his arms full of while. I hope she figures it out. I'm not a person who's going to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't expect anyone else to be. So maybe some people are, but if you're mm -hmm. a person who's struggling, it really is grappling with that mixture, that combination of patience and faith. If you mm -hmm. know you're doing the things, if you know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, I'm doing what God said, I'm reading his word, I'm talking to him and I'm not mm -hmm. doing it in a sanctimonious way. I am so raw with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I am so raw with it. Like God, <laughs> but these bills. <laughs> God, but teaching is not, mm -hmm. it's not glamorous. You know, mm -hmm. if you're doing those things, you have to wait until that patience and faith finishes grappling in you. And then the answer comes, like the mm -hmm. answer comes and the answer comes to you. I remember when, uh, when I first saw that scripture, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I was telling people and they were just like, but why would you leave? Why would you leave that job? I was like, but, but the scripture says, it's not, it wasn't for them. It was for me. Yeah. Um, and, and because I was so desperately seeking an answer from God, um, again, I knew he would talk to me because his book was open. Mm -hmm. And that would be, I, I guess that's what I would say. If you're, if you're genuinely searching, because he says, you know, if you're seeking for him, you'll find him. If you're asking, if you're, you know, knocking, he's, going, he's there waiting to give you answers, but it does take that combination of patience and faith. Um, and he's never going to, 
speak if his book is closed. I love that. I love that. God speaks. I can't complain about his silence if his book is closed. And then that combination of patience and faith and kind of being wrestling with that, grappling with that until God provides the answer that you need. It's difficult to be uncomfortable. Yes, but yes. that's what <laughs> faith is for. When mm -hmm. I left that job in August, 2017, I lost all health insurance, all the benefits. Like I had nothing Mm -hmm. that I was leaping into mm -hmm. but my conviction was so strong I said God I would rather struggle and be uncomfortable uh -huh. while you show me what this next thing is and that's a place that you have to get to we're, we're not uh -huh. people that easily give up convenience mm -hmm. uh, but I was so willing to, I was that's where I had to get to that place and it took about a month I didn't work for almost two months um Thanks, mom and dad. Um, <laughs> I didn't work for almost two months mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. by the time I eased in the first day I stepped into a classroom as a, like a temporary aid or something, mm -hmm. I felt this sense of, I belong here. I'm, I'm home. This is what it was worth. It was worth that discomfort mm -hmm. for me to experience this feeling, this feeling. And I believe that God has a place like that for each of us while we're on the earth. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that you brought that up. And I know we're short on time just because, but um, I, I think it's important to, to highlight because sometimes we can hear these testimonies and they can appear glamorous. You know, when you're on the other side, it can be, I came off the job and God blessed me with my dream job and my, you know, the career and my passion. And that's a beautiful testimony. And, and I'm grateful that you're on the other side of it. But there is a period of like, you know, well, I'm poor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating small sandwiches. But you still trusted God. You yes. Didn't go back to the corporate job. You didn't mm -hmm. say, okay, God, maybe I didn't hear, you know, maybe go teach. Oh, I felt up. that. No, I thought those things. <laughs> like, Lord, are you sure? Because I don't like hot dogs and ramen this much. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. again, that Lord, I know I did what you told me to do. Yeah. So I'm waiting for the next thing. And as uncomfortable as I am in this next thing, I'm ready for the next thing. And it comes. Beautiful, beautifully stated. Well, thank you so very much, uh, Sister Julia Missionary Pruitt. We so, so um, appreciate you sharing that, sharing your testimony with us. Um, it encouraged me. I'm, I'm, I feel full just from this conversation. Um, and I, I know it did the same for those that are watching. Thank you all so much for being with us. Um, be sure to tune in next time as we continue with our Words to Live By series. God bless. <laughs>